Okay, so hello everyone. I am very grateful to have the chance to present some work that I did for my master's project today. In fact, before I started my PhD three months ago here at ANU, I've been studying in Switzerland at an ETH Zurich, where I have been doing my master's together with Sasha Franz. And um, essentially, we have been developing a Monte Carlo simulation, which is based on Kepler statistics, and gives us the possibility um, to scientifically assess different space mission concepts for detecting and characterizing Earth like exoplanets. So to begin with, let's look into the future of exoplanet science. Um, this is a roadmap of the foreseen missions in the Cosmic Vision Program of the European Space Agency, ESA. And firstly, um, there is no large mission dedicated to exoplanet science. Secondly, the medium mission PLATO will focus on transits around solar type stars only, and the small mission CUBES will, do, will aim for photometry of planets which are already known. On top of that, there might be another medium class mission called Ariel, we have heard of it on Monday, and maybe W first with a chronograph on the American side. Um, certainly, all these missions will be groundbreaking steps for a variety of astrophysical research topics, but after all, I think it is unclear how many small sized exoplanets will be uncovered, which are both covering a broad range of host star spectral types and orbital separations, and at the same time, are suitable for follow up observations with transit or secondary eclipse spectroscopy. From the ground, the only instruments being capable of directly imaging small sized exoplanets will be the ELTs. However, as has been shown by Ian Crossfield, for example, um, they will only be powerful enough to, de to detect maybe a handful of super <coughs> Earth with uncertainties of the same order of magnitude. So, what are we going to do? Well, there are basically two different um, concepts for a large class space mission dedicated to exoplanet science. And in fact, one of these two ideas is not new. Both ESA and NASA have been looking into long base and nothing interferometers operating in infrared in the early 2000s already. And um, at the moment, NASA is studying two optical near infrared large aperture missions um, known as LUVOR and HUBEX. And to come back to my master's project after this little introduction, um, our Monte Carlo simulation gives us the possibility to scientifically assess these different mission concepts in terms of their exoplanet yield. So let me just spend two slides on how the simulation works. What we basically do is um, we simulate an exoplanet population around more than 300 nearby stars. And therefore, we use Kepler statistics um, in order to get the occurrence rate of exoplanets, depending on the planet radius and the orbital period, for various spectral types. Now, to date, Kepler has discovered more than 2,500 exoplanets. Many collaborations have been estimating the occurrence rate um, based on this extensive statistics. Um, and here we patch together occurrence rates from Fresin, Berkey, and Dressing in order to cover the broadest possible range of host star spectral types, orbital separation, and planet radio. So um, in our baseline scenario, we assume randomly distributed circular orbits for our planet population. And considering the bonds albedos of the solar system planets, we distribute, distribute them between 0 and 0 0.8 for our simulated exoplanet population. The geometric albedos are chosen rather small, but um, for the mid infrared interferometer, they don't really matter because we are looking at the thermal emission from our planets and not the reflected host star light. Um, then, for the instrument, the inner and the outer working angle are taken from the original Darwin mission proposal from 2009. And um, traditionally, such a large class space mission would be um, separated into two phases first, the detection phase, where all targets are screened for exoplanets, and secondly, a characterization phase, where a subsample of promising previously detected exoplanets would be characterized spectroscopically. And here we only simulate the first um, phase of that mission, assuming observations in three different bands, between 5.6 and 15 microns, with a sensitivity similar to the sensitivity of the infrared instrument MIRI of the JWST. So now it's time for the interesting bit, the results. So this first plot um, shows us the number of detectable exoplanets for the mid-infrared interferometer, um, dimmed by planet radii in units of Earth radii and equilibrium temperatures in units of Kelvin. And the small numbers in percent here state the fraction of planets, planets which could be detected via their radial velocity using the espresso spectrograph. And then if we integrate up the whole depicted parameter space here, we end up with 261 planets which could be directly detected at 10 micrometer. Again, these are small sized exoplanets, mostly smaller than Neptune. And it's all planets that only emit radiation due to their equilibrium temperature. It's not like young self luminous planets, planets, which would be much, much easier to do and could maybe come on top of this number. According to a paper from Sarah Seeger, um, life could exist on planets with equilibrium temperatures between 
250 Kelvin, and of radii of up to 1.75 Earth radii, and 85 planets um, fulfill this criteria, which would be ideal targets for follow observations in the second mission phase. Next, let's look at the number of um, detectable exoplanets split by bands. So here we have the 5.6 microns band color coded in blue, 10 microns is green, and 15 microns is red. Um, and you can see that in total, there could be 315 planets detected, um, some of them in only one or two bands, but roughly half of them in all three, all three bands together. Um, again, this would be ideal targets for follow-up observations in the second mission phase, because the solid characterization of the atmosphere requires the detection of several molecules over a broad wavelength range, and the mid-infrared wavelength regime um, offers several suitable absorption features there. In our paper, we also present an extensive discussion on the assumptions and how variations in the assumptions affect the results. But because time is very short, I only want to mention the most important point here, which is that, sorry, the uncertainties are well dominated by the uncertainties in the underlying Kepler statistics, which could affect the final results by like plus or minus 30%. Now detecting more than 300 planets with the mid-infrared interferometer seems very tempting, but the question is how would the alternative mission concept perform? So here are our assumptions for the optical near infrared large aperture mission. We assume a 12 meter primary mirror, two lambda over D for the inner working of the chronograph and an achievable contrast performance of 10 to the minus 10. And then um, again, we simulate observations in three bands, for which we get some sensitivity from the Lubois sensitivity calculator. Now, on top of that, of course, we have to, or we do increase the geometric albedo significantly because we now look um, into the reflected host starlight of the exoplanets. And this here is the same two-dimensional histogram as shown before. And if we integrate up over the whole depicted parameter space, we will get um, 207 planets, which, which will be detected at 550 nanometers. And roughly 63 of them um, could be habitable. Um, if looking at the number of detectable exoplanets split by bands, reveals that there could be 211 planets detected in total, which is firstly significantly less than the more than 300 for the mid-infrared nanometer <laughs> But more importantly, and I think this is the key point, only a small fraction of these planets could be seen um, over a broad wavelength range. So this plot clearly shows that the near infrared large aperture mis mission could be lose efficiency when going from the optical to longer wavelength. And this is, I think, a major caveat for, uh, for characterizing the detected exoplanets. Yeah, so I will come to a summary, and it will be very short. We have been looking into the ELTs in the beginning, and they will maybe give us a handful of small sized directly detected exoplanets. Right now, we have seen that um, the optical near infrared large approach emission would give us a, even a shopping cart full of such small sized planets. But um, the mid infrared interferometer would give us an even bigger shopping cart full of characterizing exoplanets. Thank you very much. <laughs>